Hi, we're here at the uh, second iteration of MoPrint, MoPrint 2016. And uh, this is Mark Lunning. He's one of the founders of MoPrint. But first, let's talk about Mark's work. It's, um, well, we'll look at, at it on uh, with some cutaways. But um, I wanted to, you to explain a little bit about your process. What do, what do you, how do you normally work? Uh, most of my uh, printmaking are intaglio prints. Um, Etchings. Yeah. Well, there's, yeah, there's uh, four kinds of printmaking. Uh, relief printing, which is linoleum cuts and wood cuts, uh, based, typically. But the ink is on the top of the surface. Okay. And then there's silk screen, which is a stencil process. And then uh, lithography, which is a planographic process. It's a flat plane, but the surface that you work on and, um, is a ball ground aluminum or a Bulvarian limestone. And it's porous, even though it's a hard surface. And you draw or paint on it with an oil substance. And then you can sponge it with water. And when you roll ink on it, it sticks to where you painted or drew. There's, right, because oil and water don't mix. Right. And there's, it's more complicated than that to, to adhere the image to the stone and stuff. But it, that's the basics of it. Okay. And then the fourth category is intaglio. And under intaglio, uh, it doesn't matter if you scratch the plate, you carve the plate, like engraving or mesotint or aquatint or use acid for a variety of techniques. What they all have in common is that you rub ink into the texture of the plate, you wipe the excess ink off, you run it through a press with uh, thousands of pounds of pressure, the paper conforms to the shape and texture of the plate and pulls the ink out hmm. and you use damp paper. Uh, so that's what all Intolio has in common. Um, so my current work are zinc plates. Um, I'm doing a sugar lift. Uh, you take carol syrup and water and India ink um, and you paint on your plate, uh, you let the sugar dry, then I take hard ground, which is a tar, it's a resist to the acid, and then I cover the plates completely with the, the hard ground, let the hard ground dry, put it in warm water, and the sugar lifts off. So I have a silhouette of zinc uh, where the sugar was, and that's the shape that you see in my, okay. my prints. And then that's etched? No, not yet. Okay. Then I aqua tin it, and I oh. use rosin dust on these, okay. the traditional way. Um, and then I, I paint with hard ground on the, the zinc part, uh, the things I want to keep white okay. that I don't want to be etched. And then I etch it just for a couple seconds. And then I paint the hard ground on the areas I want to stay light gray. And then I etch it some more. And then I paint on the areas that I want to have the second shade of gray. Anyway, I ended up yeah. doing uh, nine different etches on this series of plates. And so they go from a very light gray all the way to black, uh, value-wise. Wow, you have to be really organized mentally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and so did you work on all these plates at one time? Yes, I did. And I moved them around some to make sure that, that in different configurations they'd still flow together. Oh, that's, that's great. That, that, yeah, it, it gives me a, a, an opportunity in, in the future after uh, the plates are made to put them in uh, horizontal, you know, print two, three, four in a row uh -huh. or different configurations. And then I also print them on top of each other sometimes too okay. with different uh, oh, multiple colors. Great. And, and, you know, so this one is four, right. you know, one, two, three, four. Right. And then the other one at, that we were talking about at Havu that's really completely different is the same There's plates but... Three in a row. Three in a row. Wow. Yeah, and, and you can get completely different looks from these. And then yes. there's something else you're doing on top of that. Uh, well, I do uh, shin collé, which is collage in the print process. China and the reason collage. Why, yeah, uh, shin, shin collé. <laughs> shin means Chinese papers, okay. and collé okay. means to paste. Okay. And so originally, when if you had an etching this big, you'd just cut the collé paper the same size as your etching, traditionally, like okay. when they invented a couple hundred years ago. Um, and it was just to put like a cream background on a white paper okay. with your etching on top of it. So it was originally meant to just be uh, the surface area of the etching, okay. to, to put a white background on brown paper, okay. you know, with your etching on top of it. And what you do is you ink your plate, you have that on the press bed, then you take your collet papers, uh, which are, are typically our Asian papers because they're nice and thin. 
Okay. And they're not rice papers. Rice paper is slang uh, for Asian papers. Okay. There's hardly ever papers that are made of rice. They're made, typically made of uh, kozo or mulberry, which is the same thing. Okay. Um, anyway, you, uh, oh. the technique I use, you, there's a variety of techniques. But what you do is you apply the glue to the paper. You lay, lay the paper on your inked etching plates. Then you put your printing paper on top of that and run it through the press. The press bonds the papers together and prints at the same time. Oh. So that's why it's chincolé instead of collage. So the ink is on top of the collage okay. part. If you just collage, you know, if you just glue papers on your print afterwards, uh, then uh, it's just collage or mixed okay. media. Okay. But if you actually have the ink is on top of your papers, then it's chincolé because you you bonded the papers and printed at the same time. I'm wondering why you choose printmaking when you're making one of a kind pieces. <laughs> well, you know, it's because there's no way I could get those effects in drawing or painting. Okay. You know, I mean that's why uh, a watercolor artist is uh, attracted to watercolor instead of oil paint. It's the final effect that they like. Yeah. And that's why a silkscreen artist is attracted to silkscreen and the flat uh, shapes and of surface of color uh, relative to lithography where you can draw on a litho stone and your print looks just like a drawing, yeah. you know, yeah. or... With the mar that, yeah, that kind of feeling of a drawing. Yeah. And, and this is... And, and Intaglio has a variety of techniques that give you different looks uh, from soft ground to hard ground to, uh, you know, aqua tint and line etch. I mean, there's so many different techniques that there's nothing that looks like it except Intaglio. Intaglio. And so it's its own medium. It's, you know, um, uh, I think most printmakers are uh, attracted to the look, the final look. Uh -huh. And there's really a difference between um, uh, uh, the art of printmaking and the idea of Gutenberg's, you know, printing the Bible. Does, does printmaking proceed? Did, uh, well, uh, relief printing was the first printing that was invented. Uh -huh. um, uh, the Japanese and Chinese, I believe, uh, well, they were the first ones to do relief printing. Uh -huh. And it was introduced into Europe in the 1500s. Uh -huh. And at that point, then the Europeans uh, started, uh, you know, well, Durr was one of the first printmakers mm -hmm. to really run with it. And, it, and it's also a way to uh, make images for the masses. Mm -hmm. And then once uh, Gutenberg decided to, you know, make uh, letters, and you can rearrange the letters to print multiple pages, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, so have a movable type, instead of having to carve all the letters in a uh, paragraph on right. a piece of wood, you know, which is very time consuming. Yes. You can move around the letters and, you know, so movable type was a huge thing. Uh -huh. um, you know, and that's all relief printing. Um, yeah, right. And then uh, without going into great detail, then, uh, you know, uh, intaglio was invented and lithography was invented and uh, eventually silkscreen too. Yeah, and they've, they've taken off into a place where you're saying that, that people use these, these techniques just because that's the only way to get that effect. Look. Yes. Yeah. Uh, originally, uh, they were. It was a, especially for relief printing and silk screen. Uh, relief printing. It was a way to get images to the masses, mm -hmm. you know. And then also, uh, people like Rembrandt. You know, they did etchings because their paintings sold for a lot of money. But they, they loved to draw and did a lot of drawing. So if they just, instead of drawing a piece of paper, they drew through etching ground on a, on a copper plate and then etched it, then they could print 100 of those and sell them for a very reasonable price to, and, and get it out to 100 people mm -hmm. instead of one person yeah. buying a painting. Right. So it was a way to get images to the masses and also for an artist to have a price point. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of doing the opposite by making these one of a kind. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, you know, um, uh, it, are there other? It seems like you do build these things up really in a complicated way. Is there other stuff that's going on in this one, for example? Um, it? Well, it's uh, 
uh, all of poupe means area wiping, so you put different colors of ink on the plate in different areas, and that's kind of time consuming. Um, yeah. And then the collé, uh, you know, that collé there on that one, uh, you know, I probably have 40 or 50 pieces uh, when, if you actually count oh, every wow. single piece. And, and they all have to be, uh, the glue has to be applied and laid on the plate before they start wrinkling up, before you put your printing paper on. So once you get to the point of putting glue on your collet paper, they all have to be placed on the etching within like 10 minutes. <laughs> so it's a very spontaneous, I mean, I kind of, you know, pre-design it some, to a certain uh -huh. point ahead of time, but then I have to place them all on the etching, the ink yeah. etching plates, and get the printing paper down before they start curling up, oh. because they dry out. And uh, so that's, that's a challenge. So and it makes it somewhat spontaneous, too. And, and is that the last step? Yeah, and then you put the printing paper on and run it through the press. And, and is that usually when it's done? That's typically when it's done. Occasionally, I'll do some watercolor. Some watercolor? On them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does this one have a little? Uh, very little. And when do you when do you look at it and you decide? Um, occasionally, I'll look at it and you know for some reason compositionally, you know I'll just feel that it needs a little shading somewhere or just a little highlight, or you know they're usually typically very subtle. How do you know uh, when it's done? I don't know. It uh, it just feels done. <laughs> <laughs>